Good morning. Oh, hi, little lamb. Have you got a problem? Mommy, I can't find my mommy. Oh, are you lost, little lamb? Oh, my daddy, I can't find my daddy either. I can't find anybody. Uh-oh, I think we have a lost lamb on our hands. Uh, maybe we can help you. Um, what's your mom's name? Eunice. Oh, I get it, Eunice. Uh, okay, that's nice. Uh, what's, your, uh, what's your dad's name? Rambert. Okay, uh, I don't know Eunice and Rambert. This is terrible. We have a lost lamb. And where are the parents? Where's your shepherd? Oh, uh, maybe we should make an announcement. Any uh, sheep lost their little lamb? They can come forward now. My goodness, have you guys ever been lost before? Oh, I don't know what to do. What do we do when somebody is lost? Oh, there you are. Come on, the rest of the flock is waiting for you. Come on. And, oh, the shepherd is taking the poor lost lamb back. It's nice when you're lost, when somebody comes and finds you like a shepherd. Jesus says, you will never be lost. Because Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And I will always come and I will always bring you to be with me. And so the good news that we always remember is that in everything in life, Jesus is our shepherd and he'll never let us be apart from him. And that is worth celebrating, right? And so now I'm gonna feed you some lamb food, right? Is this lamb food? I don't know. Here, everybody gets a piece of candy. And thanks for coming up and helping our poor little lamb. We actually didn't do anything, did we? We didn't help whatsoever. It was all the shepherd that did it. Everybody get a piece. Dear hearers of the word, grace, mercy, peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. What is an acceptable loss? Suppose that in one year the um, stock market declines by 10%, affecting your retirement and your savings. What do you do? Do you panic? Do you pull out of the market? Do you take all your money, bury it in a coffee can in the backyard? Or do you figure, well, I think I can write out a 10% loss. That's great, but maybe it's no reason to pull out completely out of the stock market. Those are questions we have to face. Or suppose the head of your company that you work for comes and has to announce uh, that because of a downturn in business, the company is going to have to adjust. Meaning, but rather than lay off workers, which would adversely affect the company's ability to rebound when the economy picks up again, the company is just going to reduce everybody's salary 1%. From the top CEO all the way down, everybody's salary 1%. Well, what do you do? Do you quit? to go seek another job? Or do you say, well, I can tolerate a 1% reduction for maybe a year or two and see from there? Always there is the question, what is an acceptable loss? Today's two parables answer that question 
from God's perspective. Parable one, Jesus tells the story of a shepherd who leaves 99 sheep to go look for the one that is lost. Parable two, Jesus tells the story of a woman who had silver or 10 silver coins and when she loses one, she turns the house upside down, literally sweeping everything clear to find the one lost coin. Both of Jesus' parables answer the question, what is an acceptable loss for God? And the answer is zero, nada, nothing. Not 10%, not one out of 10 coins, not even 1%, not one out of 100 sheep. God does not tolerate losing anything that belongs to him. God will go to great lengths to recover what is his, even if he has to break all the laws he has made to recover a lost sinner or tax collector. So here comes Jesus associating even eating with the lost. These parables and the work that they do upon us as God's word raises questions for us, such as, who is it that belongs to God? Who are the sheep or the shepherd? Who are the coins of the woman? To whom does God say, you belong to me, and I do not like losing anything that belongs to me? The answer to those whom God possesses is those to whom God has said belong to him. That's who belongs to him. You see, God is God. God is in control of everything. Therefore, who belongs to God is who God says belongs to him. Who belongs to God is who God claims as his own, names as his own, and places his promise of ownership upon. Hello, baptism. Baptized by water and the Spirit into the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we are made anew. We are born from above. We are reborn to now be children of God, joint heirs with Christ, part of God's beloved, to belong to God. Baptism is not a human work. Rather, it is God's solemn promise. This one is mine. A promise we have great deal of trouble believing because we don't experience life as we would expect it to be if we belong to God. We don't feel like one who belongs to God, at least not all the time. So living out our life where God promises we out because all we have really in the end is God's word for it. We want, of course, physical evidence. We want all the goodies. We want heaven here on earth because then we would know why, of course, we belong to God. The evidence is here for us to hold and see and experience. But when all we have is God's word for it, when all we have is his promise to believe in, in faith, well, that's hard to do. That unbelief in God's promise is how we get lost. Not believing God's ownership claims, not believing that God's promise overcomes all circumstances, that leads us to drift. After all, we seek then 
therefore to name ourselves. We seek to make names for ourselves. We seek to possess our true self in our authentic lifestyles, and in the process we lose ourselves in our attempts to possess ourselves because we can't possess ourselves. Now in time, maybe, we will discover just how lost we are as we go through life trying to possess ourselves. Perhaps the darkness of the hole that we end up digging with our own hands combined with the circumstances that befall us, maybe it will bring us to ourselves and we will see and know, yeah, we're lost. Maybe that'll happen. But often, perhaps more often than not, we are not aware of how lost we truly are. We have examples of this in everyday life. In my own life, when I am driving the vehicle and I find myself on the scenic route, that's what I call it, uh, and my fellow traveler, oftentimes it's Cindy, pipes up, I think we're lost, I, more often than not, refuse to acknowledge the fact. Now, if you, as a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, dog owner, uh, have ever lost your child or pet, what you do is you, you're usually the first one to panic, and you start a frantic search. And when you find the lost one, you know what sometimes happens? They're just blissfully ignorant of ever having been lost. What do you mean? I was here the whole time. That is often the case when we are lost from God. God is aware that we are lost. God begins searching us out to find us and to bring us back, while oftentimes we just think everything is just fine. You see, in our sinfulness, we are not always aware of how one nibble at a time, one step at a time, in a particular direction, we can eventually lead ourselves astray, apart from the flock, away from our shepherd, our God, until he arrives and he picks us up, lifts us up, carries us back to himself. This God does, as he did at the very beginning, by his almighty word. His word of promise that claims us, his word of law that repents us to help us discover when we are lost, his word of promise that then remakes us anew as his own, this God does out of his great love. So, once again, you are here to hear God's word. And what you hear is God's word of promise, a promise that is very, very pointed. God says to you, I own you. I have bought you with my precious blood on the cross. I possess you. Now you hear that word. Perhaps it is a repentant word. What? I don't own myself. I am not in control of my life. God can call you out of your self-centeredness, out of your life alone, to now live with him, in his flock, in his church. When we are repented by this word, when we are again made God's own by the promise that he is our God and that he has done what he does to possess us, then you are delivered from all the responsibilities 
of an ownership of yourself. You are now able to rest in the arms of the one who is there and with his word caresses you, with his word that is never a lie to now rest secure. Today, you come to be repented and to be found. Hear the word of the Lord. In the waters of baptism, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit claimed you, made you one of his flock. And God does not tolerate even the loss of one of his sheep. And so today, by the word of God that I speak to you, God has come. God has come to reclaim you, a sinner, but to reclaim you as his very own. To you, I say, from God himself, from God's almighty word, you are mine. And God does not consider the loss of you an acceptable loss. Amen.